Well, hey, hey there, happy innovators. How are you all doing today? I hope that you're doing good. I hope that you're getting things done and you're living a happy, satisfied, and fulfilled life. It's very important to be happy in your life, regardless of your circumstances. And uh, if you can achieve that, you know, if you can attain happiness, regardless of whatever's going on in your life, if you can remain on the level and happy and straight and cool about things, good for you. It's a sign of growth and maturity. But, you know, there are plenty of people that are walking around in the world, especially nowadays, that are very lonely. And um, it's something that I take very seriously. You know, when I hear people talk about this idea of loneliness, this age of loneliness, really, where statistically there are so many people that are really desperate and on their own, you know, and loneliness makes people act very strange, very different. You know, there's some people that attribute a lot of the political craziness that we've witnessed over the past few years um, to that streak of loneliness that, you know, people are enduring or going through. Um, Because loneliness is a very difficult burden for a lot of people. Some people don't mind, you know, they're, they're okay with being solitary. They're okay in solitude, you know, quiet and uh, in their own space by themselves, you know? But I'm not one of those people. I mean, I try really, really hard to endure, you know, being alone a lot of the time. You know, I'm in my studio making music and doing all that kind of stuff that I normally do. So it occupies my time, you know? But I would be lying if, you know, I didn't admit that sometimes It could be pretty lonely and and being on my own a lot of the time could be difficult, especially, you know, recording music by myself. I mean, I wouldn't really have it any other way. Don't get me wrong. But just this idea of, you know, recording and setting up microphones and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, engineering uh, good sounds out of instruments and things like that with my system and my microphones and my mixer and all that stuff. You know, doing that by myself, it really kind of becomes like an art form all its own. It's kind of strange. But for a lot of people that I've talked to, especially since I went back to Cleveland, you know, I had the opportunity to kind of get submerged, you know, in this ocean of conversation and discussion from all kinds of people from my past and my family and friends of the family and people I hadn't seen in such a long time, you know, and um, the resounding kind of like consensus that I got, or I guess I should say like the, uh, the, in the final analysis after the two visits to Cleveland that I made for my father's funeral and my mother's funeral, um, a, a lot of the people that I talked to were lonely, you know, and It's kind of a funny thing, okay? Um, My father-in-law, right before he died, you know, the in the years before he died, his wife had passed away first, so he lived on his own for a couple of years, and uh, he had reconnected with a friend of his from his youth, you know, a woman that they really had kind of remained friends since they were young. Um, Every year they would send a Christmas card, you know. And, um, you know, they, they were friends. That's it. They were never romantically involved. They were just friends. So that notion that men can't be friends with women, I don't know. That's kind of bullshit to me. But after my father-in-law died, you know, this woman had just lost her husband. And um, she was kind of like stranded, you know, like emotionally stranded and so the idea 
arose for like my wife to maybe pick up that mantle that her father had set down when he died and you know befriend this older woman that lives in Cleveland and she's you know she's still there even though my father-in-law had moved to Las Vegas you know they, they remained friends for like 50 or 60 years you know and um so the idea was that my wife was going to kind of pick that up and go with it. Well, somehow that responsibility of talking to this woman fell on my shoulders by default. You know, like my wife didn't have time. You know, it was cutting into her schedule. Uh, I make my own schedule so I could fit, you know, a phone call in every once in a while and talk to this lady, you know. And uh, never met her before, don't know her, you know, just kind of keeping tabs on her, making sure that she's okay because she's all by herself and very lonely and um, older, you know. Um, And over the past couple of years, you know, having these regular phone conversations with this woman that I still have never met, believe it or not, um, in person... Um, we've become friends, like real friends, you know, which I think is hilarious because I'm, you know, much younger. I'm, she's like 80 years old or something. I'm like 50, but I can talk to anybody, you know, and it's one of my strengths, you know, I don't, I don't have any inhibitions when I'm talking to people, you know, I'll give anybody my time, you know, not a big deal. But we've become really close friends, you know, and I've really grown to really care about this lady, you know, and uh, it's really kind of an interesting experience because I'm learning like a lot of different things from this older woman that normally like a guy my age would never really get to know about an elderly woman. You know, she's not my mother. She's not a relative. Um, you know, there's, there's really no connection between her and I, other than she used to be friends with my father-in-law, you know, and, um, she's kind of opened my mind and opened my eyes to a lot of different things about being older, you know, about being on your own. Um, and like I said, being lonely. You know, her perspective on politics, you know, her her perspective on uh, money, you know, how that should be dealt with. Um, she was, when she was younger, a professional woman. And uh, she's old school. I mean, really, you know, not only is she an elderly woman, but her thinking, her behavior, her manners... Um, you know, her thoughtfulness, um, her kindness is so different than really anybody else that I speak to these days. You know, she just has a whole different vantage point, a whole different point of view. She just has like a completely different prerogative than anybody else that I know. And um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's a good experience, you know, but it it is kind of sad in a way because I'm hearing a a lot from her, okay, and from other people too, about how lonely they really are, you know. When I was at uh, the funeral for my mother, um, there was a woman who had been friends with my mother, oh, geez, well, before I was born, you know, they were best friends. And uh, she was there at my mother's wake. And, oh, I hadn't seen this woman in forever. Elderly woman now. And, you know, I'm, like, talking to this lady, this friend of my mother's, you know, at the wake. And, uh, oh, my gosh, her life is like a catastrophe, you know. Her children have kind of, like, left. They don't live in Ohio anymore. They don't really talk to her too much anymore from what she was explaining to me. Um, she's very lonely. You know, her husband had died about, uh, let's see, like 2015. 
her husband died and uh, my uncle for all intents and purposes um, and oh it's just fascinating to talk to this woman because again okay she's an elderly woman she's not my mother okay but she's my mother's friend so there's different kinds of questions that I can ask you know especially about my mother because they were friends so I get a completely different perspective uh, about my own mother you know my own mom and my own dad and really my whole family from this one woman you know it's so fascinating to me it sounds like arbitrary right it sounds like it's not that big of a deal it sounds like you know what would be interesting about talking to this elderly woman you know but believe it or not i think i've kind of come around to the thinking where i think that it's easier to talk to older women than it is to talk even to younger women like older women have a different perspective you know they have a different attitude about almost everything okay and uh it's an interesting thing to listen to somebody talk about my mother you know like like she's somebody other than my mother you know because to this friend of my mom's okay this aunt you know this informal kind of like lady who was my aunt okay um she's giving me her perspective you know she remembers when i was born she remembers uh when i was really little you know an infant you know i couldn't even crawl yet and uh she was talking about how i would laugh you know like i was just this little baby and i had like a really strong like belly laugh even as a little baby you know it's so cool to talk to somebody like that it's fascinating, you know? Think about it. Um, but again, you know, back to this idea, like she's very lonely. And I think, you know, there's this line, the song by the group Keen. They have a song called Atlantic. And in that song, there's a line that goes something like this. Like, I don't want to be old and sleep alone. An empty house is not a home. I don't want to be old and feel afraid. And uh, incidentally, really, that, that friend of my mother's, you know, my aunt, my informal aunt, she's having surgery right now. So she's uh, an elderly woman having very invasive surgery, very serious surgery today. She's having it today. And uh, she's terrified, you know, but she doesn't have anybody there with her at the hospital. Like, I almost wanted to go with her. You know, I wanted to make a trip back home, but uh, I don't think that would be possible right now for me. But um, I'm trying to keep in contact with her, you know, trying to help her through, you know, help her not feel so lonely and reminder how much that I care about her right how much I love her and how great she was when we were growing up and oh my gosh you know when my, when I was little she was just so great to me and my brothers and sisters you know she was always around and uh, oh how shocking the passing of time is you know with this loneliness that um, you know that all of us really, regardless of whether we're married or we have a family or we don't have any friends or family, whatever, you know, we all have that same potential to get to the end of our lives and have nobody around, like to be completely alone. I mean, you know, in the past couple years, past few years, I've had some health issues, you know, I've had some surgeries and stuff and to be honest with you, I can't imagine what it would be like to be going through something like that and not have my wife with me. 
you know, to help me along and to cheer me up and to visit me in the hospital and to make me laugh and to cook me food when I couldn't cook for myself and, you know, all those things. I mean, I just, my heart goes out and I mean this too, man. My heart goes out to all those people that find themselves in that kind of life, you know, where they're alone, like they're on their own. Their their family sucks, you know, like most families do. And they're a bunch of assholes, you know, and they've abandoned, you know, sometimes like in this case, like even their own mother, you know, like they have nothing to do with her, like because they're busy or something. Or they live out of state or something like that, you know? Oh, it's absolutely horrible. It's got to be a nightmare. And, you know, um, I guess I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad that I have this opportunity. Not just with this friend of my mother's, but with this friend of my father-in-law's. You know, I'm befriending these elderly women that are very alone. And they're afraid. You know, they, they can't really leave the house as much as they used to, you know, um, they rely on friends, you know, they rely on social workers or, you know, that kind of thing. They don't have anybody as a support system. And I guess I kind of feel lucky, you know, in a way, kind of feel lucky that I'm given the opportunity. I mean, because, well, you may not know me, okay? You, the person listening to this podcast, but if you've listened to any of my podcasts over the past however many years, you know. I mean, you know. I like to talk. <laughs> you know? I like to talk. I could talk to anybody. And um, I'm glad I'm like that. You know? I used to kind of feel like sometimes... I guess I still do feel like this sometimes where it's like I talk too much. You know, I should just shut up, you know, just shut up. But it's times like this, like in these circumstances where I'm doing a podcast or I'm talking to my mom's old friend or I'm talking to my father-in-law's old friend, you know, that I have the ability to strike up conversation and talk to somebody who's really lonely, you know, and I make them laugh and... Uh, it's healthy, you know, it's healthy. It makes them feel connected. And, oh, there are just so many people, not just elderly people, but people of all different ages, you know, that are so lonely. They really are. It's pitiful. You know, it's pitiful. They have that one term. What is it? An incel? You know, I think that's what it is. You know, those dudes that are kind of like living in their mother's basement. You know, they're alone. You know, they don't they don't have a date you know they don't have a girlfriend and they're just on their computer you know in that world of you know internet bullshit up to their ears in it swimming around smiling and trying to tread water you know but oh it's so sad you know it's so sad not sad in like a pathetic way but sad in like a I don't know just sad like that, that's it shouldn't be like that for anybody you know unless they really really want it that way and some people do right some people like to be alone they like to be solitary they're introverted they're not extroverted you know they don't want to be you know out there mixing it up you know that, that's not how they are I, I can understand that because you know there is even though I am an extrovert there is a real part of me okay that is introverted and there are times when i just want to be alone and it's not a big deal it's not a big thing but sometimes i do want to be alone and there's times when i am alone and i don't want to be now that's where the problem arises right right when forced loneliness you know it's not something that you opt it's not something that you choose it's just the way the cookie crumbles you find yourself alone and being alone sometimes 
can be like a very serious burden. It really can. It can be very difficult. It drives some people crazy, you know, being alone. I mean, humans are meant to be around other humans. We're meant to do that. But maybe not all the time. But we are meant to do that. I suppose that's kind of like, you know, what I want everybody to kind of think about today with this podcast. Like, think with me on this thing, you know, this topic of loneliness, like chronic loneliness in societies. So many people, so many people, you know, Um, it makes me sad, you know. Especially when it's somebody that's young. You know, that's, that's a completely different thing. I mean, these older women that I'm, you know, befriending and talking to, they were married and they had a husband and they had a long marriage and they had children. They had a full life, you know, but now they're alone. Okay. But imagine being a younger person. You never really had a girlfriend. You never really had a wife. You know, you're alone. Like you're alone. And I don't know for sure, but I would imagine that dating, like nowadays for guys especially, it's got to suck. I mean, it's got to be the worst, you know. Um, I don't know that though, you know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a blast to be 21 years old and, uh, you know, going through or getting out of college, you know. But when I visited Cleveland this last time, it's really the the only opportunity I get to be like fully immersed in like this ocean of people that I know and I know them all. All of them want to give me like a little bit of time and I want to give them a little bit of time. So we wind up talking and exchanging and kind of seeing where we're at. And a lot of the people that I spoke to, not just the older folks, but the younger folks, the men, they're confused. They're confused. They're lonely. They don't really know what to do. They don't really have anything going on, you know? Um, And I can relate to that. I can in many ways, but in some ways I can't because ever since I was really young, I had something that I wanted to be doing. You know, music was something I wanted to be doing and that forced me, okay, to be out there mixing it up with people. Like, if you're going to be a musician, if you want to be in a band and you want to write songs and you want to play in front of audiences, (laughs) you are going to be forced to be dealing with lots and lots of people. And there's a part of me that liked that. And there's a part of me that didn't, you know, there are aspects of it, like pros and cons, just like anything else. But I always knew what I wanted to be doing. I always had something to do. If I didn't have a girlfriend, which I almost, I mean, I almost always had a girlfriend, you know, I guess I consider myself lucky that way, but um, maybe not lucky. Maybe that wasn't the right word, but, um, even if I didn't have a girlfriend, okay, even if I wasn't like uh, interacting with somebody intimately, you know, bearing my soul to someone at that time, you know, my 18 year old self or whatever, 20 year old self, 25 year old self, you know, um, I always had a plan. I always had a thing I needed to be doing. I always had to be to band practice on Tuesday, you know, no matter what, you know what I mean? I always had to play a show on the weekend. Uh, work a job, you know, um, there's some dudes and women too, young ladies that I spoke to when I was in Cleveland the last time that, um, they they don't have anything going on. You know, they don't have anything. They, they might, uh, be into gaming, you know, video games. I guess that's a form, you know, of, uh, communication and interaction, social interaction. Okay. Um, I don't know too much about that world. I don't really want to. I mean, I'm just, I'm not really interested in 
video games and stuff like that. I just never have been. Even when like Atari first came out, I didn't really want to have anything to do with it. I mean, I thought it was cool, great, but like on to the next thing. But there are some people that I grew up with and a lot of the people that I know now, the younger people, where video games are really a huge thing for them, you know? And uh, while I may not always understand it, that doesn't matter. You know, it's not my life, it's theirs. But I do feel bad for them. You know, it was kind of, kind of, okay, uh, kind of depressing a little bit to me um, to go back and to talk to these people and, you know, some of them, not all of them, but some of them just have nothing going on. And it's sad. Like, it's sad. It makes me feel bad. Does it make you feel bad? You know, am, am I weird for feeling that way? Like the sense of like pity for people that just, you know, they're young and they just have nothing going on. Like nothing. They have nothing going on, you know. Um, they have no ambitions, really, you know. Um, <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> a lot of the time, okay. They don't have uh, ambition. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, a lot of the time, they don't have good taste in music, even, you know? Uh, like their likes and dislikes and stuff, I can't even relate to. And I would imagine, like, if I can't, maybe that's part of the problem. Like, if I can't, and maybe other people can't either, you know? And, uh, you know, oh, geez, you know? Is it the parents' fault, you know, when their kid, you know, is socially awkward or something? Is that their fault? Is there someone to blame? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I was talking to this younger lady in my family, you know, uh, a family member, you know. And, uh, oh. You know, I almost regret kind of like saying this, but I want to be truthful and I want to, you know, put it out there, I guess. But she is such a jerk. Like, I couldn't believe it. She's such a jerk. Like, and she's somebody that I love. Okay. She's somebody that I really do love. Okay. Much, much younger, you know, but, um, Oh, just an awful person. Like her, her attitude and, oh, geez, Louise. You know, it's like one of those things where, um, like I, like I would try to be complimentary to her, you know, I would try to, um, encourage her and say kind things and be cordial and all that. Right. And she was like so socially retarded that she was kind of like, taking what I was saying as an insult. Like if I said, oh my gosh, when you were little, you were such a cute kid, you know? Well, what are you trying to say? That I'm ugly now? No, that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's like, really? Like, you really just asked me that, you know? What are you talking about? Like, why would I be insulting you? Isn't that odd? I mean, I was just, that's just one example, you know? I've had like several conversations with this person, you know? And it confuses the hell out of me. And eventually I just got to the point where it's like, she's so difficult to talk to and so bitter and like, I don't know. You know, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a little whacked out. Okay. Maybe, maybe she's a little wacky, you know? Um, and I'm not just saying that to be funny, you know, maybe, maybe she needs some therapy, you know, maybe we all do. Okay. So I'll, I'll say that maybe we all need some therapy. Right. But, uh, oh my gosh, this experience of talking to a younger person 
who's that bitter and that jaded and negative and you know what the hell like why would you ever want to spend time with somebody like that you know I don't I mean I don't I don't want to you know if she really needed my help uh, she knows that I would help her she knows that at least I think she does and uh, but there again just another example you know this, I guess, you know, maybe it's not just the loneliness. It's like this weird kind of spirit has descended upon the earth, you know, in the past four years. And people's outlooks are so negative and their lives are so mundane and they're not excited or enthusiastic about anything anymore. They don't even know what they like and they don't even know what they want to do or what they would dream of doing or anything like that. It's a little bit sad, okay? Um, actually, it's a lot sad. It's a lot sad. Sometimes, you know, it gets to be pretty heavy. You know, when I think about it too much, when I think about everybody that I talk to, I think about all the things I heard, you know? I think about all the stuff I see, like on the internet or whatever, even in the world, you know, going out into the world and talking to people and just, oh, the experiences, sometimes they're great. Usually they're okay, you know, but sometimes they're awful, you know? People are miserable and I'm not like one of those people that really wants to be miserable. Are you? Are you the kind of person who wants to be miserable? Are you happy when it rains? You know, are you that kind of person? I'm not. I'm not. Some people probably wouldn't believe that. Like if they were to listen to some of my songs and some of the lyrics that I've written and all that kind of stuff. But that's my art. You know, that's an expression of something. You know, and I don't know. Why why is that? That's a good question. Why why is it that some of my songs are kind of sad or, or something like that? You know, maybe it's because okay, okay. Maybe it's because those emotions like sadness and stuff or regret or whatever, those are easier to express in a song than feelings of happiness and joy. You know? But I try to do both, okay? I do consciously try to do both, you know? I'm not a sad song all the time, right? But uh, I don't, I don't want to be that kind of person. You know, I don't. I hope that you don't. You know, I, I hope that by sharing these like really personal things from my life in this podcast, you know, like I've been doing, since the beginning, you know, I tell you how I feel about something. I tell you something that you really don't need to know. Maybe sometimes something I have no business telling anybody, you know. But the thought that I have when I'm doing that is kind of like, well, one, there's like regret. Like, oh, man, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I talk too much. <laughs> OK, but there's this other part of me that kind of wonders, you know, are the people who are listening kind of like empathetic to what I'm saying? You know, are they jiving with what I'm saying? Because it's part of their experience too, you know? And maybe by hearing somebody else talk about it, because let's face it, this stuff that I'm talking about most of the time, lately anyway, on this podcast, nobody else is talking about this stuff. You know, like it's so personal and so weird and I'm aware of that and I don't care. You know, if people think I'm weird, I don't care. I don't. Actually, it's a badge of honor, you know, um, but I do wonder, like, are some people that are listening kind of feeling me, you know, they know where I'm coming from because they've experienced a little bit of it themselves and I've gotten enough response and I've gotten enough comments 
to know that really is how it is for people that I talk to or uh, people that listen to my podcast, you know? I mean, when you think about it, really, when I do anyway, I should say, um, this whole idea of talking like this is really pointless. And you know, there's no uh, money. You know, I don't make any money off of it. Um, all I'm really doing is volunteering, you know, personal experience, opinions, you know, whatever, like imparting that onto strangers that are in some cases very far away from me. Okay. Geographically or whatever, or maybe even, uh, philosophically. Okay. Uh, and there's like a, a certain amount of vulnerability to that. You know, I put myself in a position where I'm exposing uh, a part of my inner self, you know, openly talking about it. But, you know, I did explain in previous podcasts this idea, okay, um, that this this process for me personally of, of talking into the microphone, you know, I speak things out they come out of my mouth and I no longer think about them anymore. Like it, it, it's like a, an exorcism. Okay. Like it just, I set those bricks down. I don't have to think about it anymore. I don't know why it works that way. You know, maybe I'm whacked out too. Maybe I'm weird too. I don't know, but that's how it goes for me, you know, because you know what? Honestly, I spend a lot of time in my head. You know, I think about a lot of things. I'm alone and I have time to work and to think. And not everything I'm thinking about is like how many DB there are on my guitar, you know, or uh, the lyrics to a song or, uh, you know, the mastering process of a song or something. That's not always technical stuff that I'm thinking about while I'm playing my guitar or when I'm in my studio or when I'm, you know, doing my thing, you know, I do a lot of different stuff, you know, and I think a lot while I'm doing it. (laughs) I just do. It has, it affords me that time and that solace, that quiet to work, to focus, but then also to think, to just think about things, you know, (laughs) like whether it's mud flood, you know, or, you know, uh, ancient civilizations or, uh, what I want to cook for dinner. Cause I love cooking. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I, mean, I love to cook. I'm actually a pretty good cook and not a gourmet chef, you know, but I'm pretty good. Um, actually lately I've been getting into a little bit of art again, you know, that's that season kind of thing where the feeling is right. You know, it's kind of cool, but it affords me this time, you know, to think about things. I spend a lot of time thinking and I guess, therefore, I feel kind of like obligated if I'm being afforded that time to think and analyze, you know, from a from a place of truth where I really am trying to be good and trying to be true even though I may fall short sometimes I try not to, you know, uh, I'm obligated to share my thoughts, I guess. And that way, that's, that's kind of like how I see it. You know, if I'm going to have this kind of life where I'm afforded the time to think and I do think, and I'm a critical thinker and I'm also creative and, you know, working on new stuff, you know, or whatever, then whatever kind of conclusions I come to, you know, maybe on some small level, I'm doing you, the listener, a service by expressing that to you. And, you know, on this idea of loneliness, um, and I'm aware of this, okay, because I've been told this by people, real people, not chatbots and, uh, you know, Chinese spies and uh, honeypots, you know, Um, because there's a lot of those, let me tell you. Some people rely on this podcast because they're lonely, you know, and my voice is a voice that's in their ear, you know, 
and uh, it's not threatening. Uh, it's not critical of them. You know, they're able to sit back and just listen to somebody talk. And even though it's from a distance, even though it's, you know, through a podcast, it is a form of connection. And isn't that cool? I think it is cool. You know, if we're going to talk about this loneliness thing and all that, the, the dark side of it, the upside of it is, is that we, you know, while we live in this time of darkness and sadness and loneliness and people that don't know what to do, there's nobody with them, they're on their own. We also live in a time where a jackass like me can grab a microphone and talk into the microphone and spend some time with you. And even though I'm speaking into a microphone to probably at this point, like thousands of people, um, I am, at least for that brief moment in time while you're listening, I am truly talking to you. I mean the person listening to this podcast right now. It's just me and you, right? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? A personal experience, but being broadcast out to all those people at the same time, you know? Um, What a thought. What a thought. It makes me, you know, want to grab the microphone and do another podcast, you know? Am I saving the world? No, I know I'm not. Um, Am I making anybody's life better? Maybe, maybe, maybe not, but maybe. I guess if there's that slim chance that I am, then I'm just going to keep on doing it. (laughs) You know, what does it hurt, right? I don't do this for money. I don't do it for fame. You know, kind of do it for myself, you know. Um, but really at the end of the day, I'm really kind of doing it for you and me, you know, it's for the both of us. And, um, that's kind of a beautiful thing to think about. I think I'm going to end the podcast there, you know, with those thoughts, because it's really something that I like to think about. Um, you're not alone out there, you know, um, you're not alone. You got the Singularity Podcast, you know. You've got me, uh, you know. Uh, if you really needed to talk to me, you know, if somebody really needed somebody to talk to, I would I would probably do it. I would probably do it. They were lonely, you know. Um, no promises, though, because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be spending my entire day, like, on the phone you know, talking to people. I like to get things done. So, but I am, I am offering this time to you, you know, uh, my happy innovators. Uh, Yeah. So I'm going to leave the podcast there for today. Now I told you guys, remember, I told you that I was going to be making more podcasts regularly. You know, I'm getting back on the horse. So far, I'm doing pretty good. You got to admit, this is the third podcast I've done in the past three weeks, I think. I think. So, just saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honoring that pledge so far, you know. And uh, so with that, my happy innovators, you know, have a great weekend. Try to stay out of trouble and have some fun. Try not to be too lonely if you are and uh if you're not lonely try to have a great time you know with the people that you love and the people that are around you you know be present be in the moment turn off your phone and talk to people you know you'd be surprised at where things could lead so remember folks if you want to keep what you've got You've got to give it away. Take it easy, everybody.
Okay, all you happy innovators that are kind and gracious enough to hang around to the end of the podcast for some music. I've got a little bit of a treat for you here. Um, I'm in the process right now, okay, of assembling the PC3 album Mira 1, okay? Um, And Mira 2 and Mira 3. Okay, they're all happening simultaneously. And so what I'm going to share with you right now is the introduction, you know, the opening to Mira 1. Um, It's got a little bit of extra in the beginning. Uh, Then it goes into a song that you've never heard before. It's brand new. It's called Equinox. And then I'm going to go into the Aegis Destroyer. That's going to be the first opening of the album. And then I'll cut it off there. That's all you get for now. Um, I'm in the process of uh, reconfiguring my distribution from my records and stuff like that. Um, Kind of changing things around. So that's why you're not getting the Mira One album on Spotify and all that stuff yet. It's coming. I'm working on it. It's a real thing. It's happening. But right now... It's not happening. So uh, I figured in the meantime, like in the interim, I'll give you a little taste of what I've come up with so far for the new PC3 album. Um, So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Like I said, there's the opening and then there's a song called Equinox and the Aegis Destroyer remixed for the album. Okay, so here we go. Check it out. Peace out, everybody.